That's a boss, Lisa, around and take the microphone away. I can't, well, <laughs> but she's the high priestess, so, so I, I can't deny the high priestess. So can I please quickly get these individuals front and center? James Cleveland, Mary Barasa, Lisa and Jason, Sam Shaw, Glenn Waddell, Courtney Muir, Jamie Packer, our local host, Daniel, please come on up. Megan Hayes Golding and Tina Cardo. <laughs> take a breath for a week, but this is really a year-long volunteer, um, a lot of hard work that they do. Um, I'm happy to call them all friends, and I think it's amazing that there are 200 people here who would say the same. Um, so thanks again to, to uh, Graham Fletcher, I almost called him Graham Fletcher, sorry, and, <laughs> and John Stevens for um, coordinating a thank you gift for everyone. I have... Um, gift cards for every committee member, except for Mary, because she's Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> and just to clarify, they just don't like these particular gift cards in Canada, so we have an alternative. Um, <laughs> so, thank you, everyone. And I'm going to stand over there and distribute these and let Carl uh, get on with it. Uh, thank you for indulging us. Thank you. And I will say this again tomorrow, but it, it is the God's honest truth. I cannot, I do not and cannot do this by myself. And um, this, this group of people has really um, held me up a lot this year. And I am incredibly grateful for that. Um, but that's, this is, I'll get in that later. So this is Carl, because this is Carl's time. Carl is a, okay, that state up north that I don't say, um, Born New York City based assistant principal at, at City S High School High School at, at City S School High School. It is a little different. Yeah, a little different. He's on the publishing committee for NCTM, was a school leader fellow at Math for America New York. He's been to PCMI. He's done other stuff too. You can ask him about it at the bar or whatever later. Carl wants to say a thank you to myself and the rest of the committee and hopes that the audience can give them all a round of applause, but it looks like we've already done that. <laughs> um, Kate kind of jump-started that for us. Uh, Kate, Carl first started blogging in 2005 on Blogger, but didn't get into the MitBoss until recently and has since helped with Global Math Department and some other MitBoss initiatives. He is going to talk about hitting the darn send button. Ladies and gentlemen, Carl Oliver. PMC, let's do this. Um, first, I want to thank um, everybody, even though I thank the mechanics. I feel like you can't thank people enough, right? Uh, I also want to thank Sadie for putting this on Periscope right now. If you're on Periscope watching this either now or in the future, what I'm, what I'm trying to do is make this like a live uh, Twitter chat. So there's going to be questions posted here, and those questions are going to be like answered, hopefully, by people outside of this room as well. And in the future, if you're watching this, you could go back and you can look at the conversation that's going to be, take place. Maybe on Storify, or, or you just go search the hashtags, that the hashtag pushed in. So um, if you want to do any sort of back channel conversation, that's the hashtag over there. And as far as the, the actual prompts, 
Um, Kate, who just up here, and uh, Benjamin, who's also just up here, uh, volunteered to, to help tweet those out as well. So that'll be good for, for you guys who are staring at your screens and not looking at me, as well as the people on the internet at home. Anyways, silently, uh, by yourselves, think about a, let me get this, time where you pushed sin and something good happened. Think of a time that you pushed sin, shared something, and then there's a positive outcome. Everybody got something? All right. So share that with your neighbor. And then while you're at it, tweet it out um, with the hashtag Q1 and hashtag push in. And you don't need to do TMC because I think I'm the only push in going right now. But if you want to do that, All right. When I applied for my job, too. I'm just like, I'm having a hard time thinking earlier, but like today, when I like tweet and say, yeah, I do these like test corrections, or I just give them a test that has every problem done wrong, and so everyone has to correct it, and like everyone is like retweeting it, and I'm like, okay, you know what I mean? So I'm like having a hard time, I'm like, really, because that's just like exactly what popped in my head. That's cool. <laughs> Yeah, but it's just like this little thing that I did, it seemed to resonate with me, so, yeah. About another 30 seconds on this. So, thank you, and if you guys do tweet it out, that'll be really good, and this will be useful later. Uh, I guess I should share my story, so I'll do that as well. And uh, at some point in February, I had a question, and I tweeted it out. I wanted to know, is there a Twitter chat for people who like to talk about or teach non-routine problems that have like, a conversation afterwards? So that was, that was what I put out there. And I was curious about it. I honestly didn't have this whole idea fleshed out. Luckily, I got some feedback from people um, in the uh, Twitter blogosphere who then gave me some ideas. Eventually, the idea was I should make a Twitter chat about it. And apparently all you have to do is just pick a day and time and, and then exist. So, uh, so I did that. I picked a day, I picked a time, five, seven days after that, uh, this thing prod chat started, and it was, it was a positive thing. It was a good thing. Uh, a lot of stuff happened. I eventually created a lot, this, a lot of resources for teachers that was useful. I, I also created um, what I would call an initiative. It's a, a space for people to get together and like, communicate and talk about teaching and learning and, and whatever. So this, this is uh, something that I created and I also created some actual real connections with people. Some people who are like, out here in this room right now uh, and in other, too many to mention. But because of my work in that, it was actually like a real positive thing. So all these things that happened to me when I pushed in, which uh, again were I understood I got different perspectives from different people when I, when I put it out there. I got some feedback about my ideas and what could happen. That then became a, a source of resources. I got resources. I gave resources. So, uh, you know, back and forth with that, as well as creating a, a place for uh, participation and the connection with real people. So you guys just thought of something and you shared, did I cover the benefits, the positives from your experience in these five categories? Does this pretty much cover everybody? Did you raise your hand if that was the case? I'm just curious. Show of hands. Did I do it pretty? Okay, so this is a pretty good framework of what good things can happen if you actually do it. If you're pushing the button, if you're putting yourself out there, if you're growing. And these things actually are, are really important and a lot of people agree with me. That, um, one, one thing... NCTM says principles to action that there's this norm of teacher isolation, this, this which is the reverse of this push and send thing, and that it has to give way to a new professional normal collaboration. It's something um, that where people will collaborate with their colleagues and open their practice to collective observation, study, and improvement. And this is from principles to action, but in principles to action, I've actually quoted a book from 2007. So yeah, 10 years ago we realized that, that something like this was needed. So this is. Important. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Ellie Drago Severson. She's a researcher that researches what what kind of things help teacher growth, uh, transformative adult learning, 
and it talks about teaming, teachers working together on something, mentoring, teachers having a, a partner that they work together on, collegial inquiry, and leadership roles. Some of these things are things that happen when we connect online, uh, when we connect in this, in this mid boss that we're in. Or whatever, the other one. Never mind. Um, <laughs> Charlotte Danielson, she's got the four domains of teaching. A lot of you, your states have this, so I really don't want to like bring up the bad feelings. But <laughs> fourth, the fourth domain, uh, professionalism, reflecting on teaching, participating in the professional community, growing and developing professionally, showing professionalism, all these things are things that you're doing. If your administrator catches you on Twitter, you can say, oh, I'm just polishing up that domain four. Uh, so... <laughs> And reflecting, I mean, there's so many places where the idea of just reflecting in general, like thinking about what you do and then doing, you know, writing about it or, or sharing that reflection. So valuable, so many books. So, what's the point? I guess I'm saying is like, look, this push in thing is sitting on like a platform. Uh, uh, it's solidly grounded in lots of very well respected research. It's not just some stuff we're doing, it's not just like a distraction or whatever. So, with all these good, positive things that can come out of this, why is it so, why is it so hard? Like, why is it so hard to do? It's, 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 it's like, if it's such a good thing, why aren't uh, more people doing it? And um, so to answer that question, I sat down with someone who's not doing it. Uh, I was talking to you. <laughs> This person, not to be named, who may or may not be female, uh, was, uh, it actually happened too, I was telling him, oh, I have this talk coming up, and, and, and I was like, you know, but you know, you should do this, we're sitting here at this, like, math event, like, you totally benefit from this, she's like, yeah, I know, I would, you're right, like, I really should, I, I get it, and I'm like, well, why don't you, and this is what she said, so, the, the first thing, for the people in this, the, the non twitter bloggers for people, uh, she said it was time, and that's real. That's real for all of us in the Rebellion too. Kids, work, um, family stuff, whatever. Game of Thrones, apparently. Like, it's only so much time you can spend. Uh, technical proficiency. I, she, she pulled out her phone, and it, I guess it was, it is kind of confusing. There's a lot of things to explain, like why is there a pound sign, what is the at sign, and why do you call it an at when it, yeah, whatever? So, so there's a lot of stuff that you have to explain. And then if you explain, if you talk about like the regular things that are hard to explain in terms of technology, then there's also like the layer of, of, of our own communications that's hard to explain too, that don't have as familiar or easy to, easy to find resources. So then you have to go through technology to get the resources that explain to you how to use the technology. It's, oh yeah, it's a real thing. Um, then, once you're on there, keeping up, there's so much stuff, and it seems like it's growing a lot. And so it becomes this almost like slog to know what's going on and who's referencing what, and, there, and that's a very difficult thing. There's also uh, anonymity, and that's what, this was a big thing, obviously. Uh, and there's a couple like flavors of this. So the one is sort of like the professional responsibility anonymity as someone who's educating children and is in a position uh, where they're also representing their school, the district, or their organization, that they're, they're just, you can't say everything that's on your mind because you might be putting your career in jeopardy, you can't say what other people are doing or share what students are working on because you might be putting their privacy in jeopardy. So how do you gauge that anonymity in a way that lets you, you know, participate and not be like frightened. So there's, there's that, and then there's also this level of anonymity that's important too, of just comfort. Like, am I really comfortable putting myself out there like that? If I, when I was um, back in 2005, the blog that I said I started, I actually never shared that with anybody. That blog is like no one. There's like four people who've read it because I was not ready to put myself out there like that. And that's a that emotional safety thing is really important, and people need to know how to gauge that. And that's something that like. What's happening? With all these things, though, I feel like these are barriers for people in here, too, for people in the, the larger community, too. It's, it's something that, that happens all the time. It's just that for the person who I was interviewing, they were enough to prevent them from actually, like, making the bridge over to where they were actually going to, you know, hit the button and push send. 
So since we're all dealing with it and, and it's something that we all have to do as a reality, it might be a good time to talk to your neighbor, think about one of these barriers that you have overcame, that's the right word, right? Uh, and, or one that you still struggle with, and, and share that with your neighbor. And if you get a chance afterwards, you can tweet it out. So let me get, take a minute, you can do that. What's a barrier?